What did Robert Frost mean when he said that ice would suffice to end the world? From which collection this poem is from? Fire and ice are signifying what elements in this poem? Welcome to my classroom. Today, we will be studying and analyzing the poem Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. The poem Fire and Ice written by Robert Frost at first seems to be a short condensed poem. But after a thorough reading, you'll realize that this poem has different layers to its meaning. Fire and Ice is a complex, compact poem with so much thought that it whets the appetite of an imaginative, meditative, curious mind. The poem calls out for an introspective reading. Fire and Ice is from the New Hampshire Collection 1923. The poem was published after World War I, that was from 1914 to 1918. From just this information, you may get an idea that this poem is foreshadowing something. Let's begin with the recitation. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favour fire. But. If it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. The poem begins by discussing the ways the world might end. The tone is kept conversational with short statements. Only two choices are given for the demise of the world, fire or ice. Till here, we might construe that the poet is taking a scientific route to support his initial statement. The world did begin as a ball of fire, went through the ice age, and might again be moving towards a fiery end, with the threat of climate change and global warming looming over our heads. Who knows? But no, that's not what Frost is hinting at. The two contrary terms, fire and ice, are there in the poem for a purpose. They are symbolic. Fire and ice individually have metaphorical meanings. Let's see how by going through the next lines. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. Now, the speaker is introduced in the first person, which means that whatever he is going to add comes from a personal point of view or opinion. Moving on, he admits that yes, he has experienced fire and that he agrees with those who think the world will be destroyed by fire. In the previous poem, The Dust of Snow, I reminded you that words, objects, things and anything we can see, touch or feel can have symbolic meanings. Here we are going by the conventional interpretation of fire and ice. Conventional means standard or common. Fire can represent desire and ice can represent hate. Let's take an example. To set the world on fire. This idiom means a strong desire to become recognized or famous. You can become famous or infamous. Likewise, desire can be constructive or destructive based on what you do with it. Ice represents coldness. Revenge is the dish that is best served cold. A person is going to a great extent to harm or hurt someone. The emotion over here is hatred. You have to hate someone to seek revenge. Ice or hatred is a completely negative emotion than fire or desire. Coming back to the poem, the speaker is admitting that his own experiences with desire have led him to destructive paths. He was hurt but never destroyed by it. The speaker knows just enough about the desire to humorously add, well, I can safely say that I agree with people who believe that fire can quite efficiently end the world. Also. 
please note that for this poem, if we keep the event of World War I in hindsight, we can associate it with consequences of negative desires. The desire for world domination during the time of World War nearly led the world to its destruction. At the moment, in our minds, we are associating that negative desire with war, violence and a world engulfed in fire, not in ice. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. The second stanza is shifting towards the second alternative. In this stanza, the speaker is concluding with a very smart oxymoron that if the world has to end twice, implying that if fire succeeds in doing its business and somehow the world survived, then ice too would be a great option to have as a second alternative. How is the speaker supporting this statement? Because just like desire, he has experienced hate too. Remember, fire is representing desire and ice is representing hate. Speaker claims that he knows enough of hate. Unlike desire, hate is entirely negative. There is no positive or negative aspect to it. Hatred consumes a person completely. The language and the tone of the poem are very understated. Especially if you read the last line to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. As a reader, you might find would suffice a very casual phrase to talk about the end of the world. Please note that this line is just stating his opinion. It's not declaring that ice will end the world. In line 8, the word great means powerful or mighty. However, the speaker is using it sarcastically. It is adding to the friendly, relaxed, informal tone of the poem. Now let's come to the analysis of the poem. Rhyme scheme of the poem is ABAA, BC, BCB. The tone of the poem is understated casual, non-declarative. The speaker is just stating his her opinion that he thinks fire and ice, desire and hate can destroy the world. Theme of the poem could be desire and hate culminating in human propensity for world destruction. Fire or desire is a negative emotion. Selfish desire, negative desire, greed, war, etc. could affect the world if not checked in time. Ice or hatred Coldness, indifference, hatred These emotions may very well end the world twice because one stops to empathize. It removes any possibility for further dialogues, debates or any initiative for peace or normalcy. Irony. What do you understand by irony? Expressing one's meaning by using language that normally signifies the opposite, typically for humorous or emphatic effect. Lines 4, 5, 8 and 9 have a humorous effect. Poet has experienced desire and its consequences and without any objection readily agrees that yes, fire indeed can destroy. Same goes for lines 8 and 9. He thinks ice too is great and would suffice just as well to end the world. He is talking about the end of the world and the manner he has phrased that sentence seems as if he is having a polite conversation, discussion over tea. Although heat or fire is the opposite of cold or ice, Desire is not the exact opposite of hatred, though they are interconnected. In the end, Robert Frost is hinting that human emotions and conditions are potentially volatile enough to destroy the world and that we should make smart choices and not let emotions rule our heads but sound reason.
This concludes our today's session. If you like the session, please do like, share or subscribe. That would really help me and encourage me to make more videos for you. Thank you and have a nice day.